know, what, what, well, Simon joins us just before he's about to tee off at the Australian, which I'm, I'm by the sounds of that, I'm thinking this is one of them snooty, wooty, highfalutin, invite-only golf courses, Dooley. Uh, that's correct. I've had to walk away from the clubhouse just to use my phone. It was one of those. <laughs> well, we appreciate it then. Um, <laughs> hopefully off the tee, you drive like the both the Black Caps and Pakistan did first ball last night, a beautiful straight one for four. But after that, yeah, let's start with our batting, mate. It was never enough. I was, I was obviously messaging you. I was hoping that 160 would be enough, maybe. 150 perhaps we could defend it. In the end, they did it easy. They did. I mean, we made them work for it late in the piece, but uh, it just, they were, it always felt like they were on top of the game a little bit last night, Pakistan. Their bowling was outstanding. After the first game against India, where they conceded 160, they hadn't conceded more than 130, that bowling attack, in the rest of the tournament. So they've been exceptional. Their batters are the ones that have been struggling to be, you know, to be fair to, to Pakistan's batting lineup. So, you know, 152, you can't, it was middling. It wasn't. You didn't think it was going to be enough. It might have possibly been if we'd taken wickets in the power play. But we seemed to struggle our way to that score as well. It was never a convincing 150-160. And, um, you know, their, their bowling was exceptional. And we just couldn't find a way to really get on top of them at any one stage. Was it the right decision to bat first? I mean, obviously, in hindsight, we say well, yes or no, no. But, I mean, would you have batted first? 100%. All, all day, every day. Um, perfect decision. Just didn't. You know, we, we didn't bat well enough, and they at times didn't allow us to bat well enough. I thought there was some, you know, there's a couple of Finn Allen's decision making. Um, I mean, Shane Shafridi, his mo is swinging it back and targeting the pads. You get your pads out of the way. You don't jump across, to put your pads in the way, and and so that thought process around that decision was was poor. I thought, and you know, post the first game and a little bit against Ireland, he hasn't really done much. Um, Devin Conway not diving. Um, yeah, you know, talk there, about there that, moments. Simon, because you actually talked about that in the commentary a lot. And what and what yeah. you were saying, in case people weren't actually listening or seeing it or listening, what you were saying is that you've got to commit more than that. You know, you have to throw yeah. your body on the line. You've got to dive for that. We saw that from Pakistan from the off. That first four the guy yeah. saved, it was almost like a football crowd. He's all of a sudden G'd up. Everyone's, you know, they're mm. into it. They're clapping each other. And he just, I mean, I just thought he was a bit casual, Conway. Yeah, the only thing you have is your wicket, Marty, you know, and, and you've, you've got to do everything you possibly can. Pull the dive out, and if he dives, he's probably home. And and even Kane, you know, when the bat got stuck, I mean, he should have been run out by Nawaz at the bowler's end. Just, there's no, I, I don't know. I mean, look, it's a hard thing to say, and I know in the moment you've just got to think, I've got to dive, but it is all about the, pre, pre, you know, preservation of your wicket. And it just didn't seem like um, that was quite there. I think if... If you see certain players, I mean, Phillips would have been diving. There's some guys that do, and maybe he's just not a diver. Mm -hmm. But in those sort of situations, they're the little little things and the little moments in a game where you just might find something. All right, Conway at the half time when Ian Smith was interviewing him was quite confident. I'll go back to that. But I also thought Phillips had an absolute brain fade because when he came in, we had the time. We still had the balls there. But, you know, just chipping a little caught and bottom. Mean, that's so disappointing. That's the worst shot he's played the whole bloody tournament. Yeah, it is, and it just held in the wicket a touch, and that that showed to me that the batting first was the right decision in that moment. You're thinking, okay, it's just held a touch. He's probably just gone a little bit too quickly across the line. It stayed in the surface. What they talk about with the spinners, and in the end, it was a pretty lame, pretty soft dismissal. But you know, you, you can't lump it onto onto Glenn Phillips. It, the the all round performance from Pakistan, I think, was was brilliant with the ball and we were just off our game a little bit with the bat. It just didn't so seem like we were at the races. Yeah, and that seemed the whole game though. Why? I mean, why? Okay, we kick-started against Australia. We were great. I mean, we weren't that, you know, impressive against Ireland, against England. We lost that. I mean, we just, we seemed to save our worst game, I suppose, was what I'm saying, for the for the best and the most important game of the tournament. I think it's most important. Yeah, and they, they saved their best. They saved their best game and, and that's kind of how these tournaments work and and you know I mean I, I know we talked about it at the start Marty I, I didn't see us as a final team I, I thought we were a, a, a chance a chance of making the semis I didn't give us a huge chance of making the semis so I, I kind of feel and, and, and I don't want to sound like a negative Nancy but I kind of feel that was our lot you know I, I feel that we are a good tournament side I didn't think we had a team to win the tournament um, at the start of it and Australia surprised me. I remember saying that to you as well. It surprised the heck out of me with the fact that we, we took Australia over as easily as we did. 
And so for mine, this is probably about where I thought we were at. And we just came up against a, a rampant Pakistan side that were, were far too good for us. Now, all of us of an age, as soon as we got Pakistan in the semi, we're drawing parallels with 92. <laughs> Dooley, when I looked at the crowd last night, and you would have seen them, they were, there were so many in those 92 shirts, right? That pale green yeah, that they were, yeah. they, they were holding up signs 92 to 2022. I suppose the connection was simply that they shouldn't have made the semi-finals because they they looked dead and buried, and somehow they got yes. it. But once they got there, look, I, look, I look at the uh, Italians when they go to a football World Cup. They've gone through the group stage where they've drawn every game. They scratch their way into the knockout stage. But guess who makes the final or the semi-finals? The crowds are exactly the same. So I mean, yep. they may, you know, they may have got lucky, and we can say that Pakistan got lucky. But there's nothing lucky about the way they played last night. Not at all. They look, they they're just that sort of side. They they turn up, and all of a sudden. They, uh, they they get a little bit of a – the crowd gets behind them. They get a little bit of momentum, and away they go, and they just – they feed off it. Um, you know, and it's like the fourth time we've now lost to Pakistan in a semi-final of a World Cup um, of any description, you know, what any white ball World Cup. They they find a way. They're our bogey team, um, and I the, – the passion. The passion in that jersey. I mean, you know, I, look, I do the IPL. I, I do the PSL. The passion in that Pakistan Premier League is just – it's phenomenal. And they one thing they do do, Marty, and they continue to do it, is they produce quick bowlers. And they do it, you know, they've got a conveyor belt of quick bowlers. There's mm. another four or five guys that could be playing in that side. Wow. Um, sorry, mate, I hope that golf cart's not too That's right. No, 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 that's right. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, you know, they've got a, they've just got a conveyor belt of these quick, quick bowlers coming through. That You know, Nassim was brilliant. Uh, Harris Ralph is, is a seriously good bowler. They've got this kid, Shanawaz Dahani, who's sitting on the bench, who I absolutely love. So it's... It's a it's a side that when you give them conditions or you give them an opportunity, Bubba's been out of form, Rizwan's been out of form, all of a sudden one out of the middle of the bat and, and away they go and they just get on a bit of a roll and that's how Pakistan have always been. Daryl Mitchell stand out for us, 53 off 35. He hit one, just one six, he hit three fours, but he was going for twos, he was finding gaps, maybe got a bit lucky with a bit of aerial you know, every now and again, but he showed that you could actually bat on that pitch. And so how much were we short, mate? I mean, I was saying to you 160, what was realistic? Is it is 170 maybe? Well, I think we were 10, we were 10 to 15 below par. Okay. At 165, 165, we are well in the game there. And, um, you know, look, it, it's, it's harsh and it's hard because... Trent Bolt probably had his, you know, one of his, his worst nights for a while. Yeah, bizarre. Um, and, and, and these things happen. You know, it doesn't make them bad players, bad cricketers. Daryl was brilliant again. I mean, another half century in a, in a T20 World Cup semi final. I thought he was really good. He took the, the pressure away from Kane in that partnership. I think Kane's innings was, was decent last night, to be fair to him, because we were in trouble. We, we needed that type of innings last night. Mm. We're continually losing wickets around him and in trouble. I thought he played a, a relatively good knock last night. Again, we just came up against a better side. They didn't allow us to get away. Their, their bowling continuously just put us under pressure, and um, and they were they were just a better team last night. Hundred and five though before they lost the first wicket, and then they I mean they, I don't know what, what we I mean maybe they just knew that they could time it out and pace it out because then they took you know to within five balls to actually get that total. But you always kind of felt and knew that they were that they were getting there, right? Yeah, you knew they were getting there, but we, we were saying, you know, in the back of the commentary box, and you know, some very learned gentlemen in that commentary box mm-hmm. last night. But it was like only Pakistan can beat Pakistan from here, right? And and that's kind of how yeah. you think yeah, about yeah, it because yeah. yeah. there's no other team could beat could beat them apart from themselves. Yeah, okay. Just before I, before I let you go back to the tea. All right. So just the energy in in the field. I mean, the way that they started the game, it was you know, I don't know whether these things mean anything, but when you're looking at the TV, it, it shouts at you. They they were so more revved up than us. It just I don't know whether it meant something more to them or that was the way of, of, of them keeping themselves mentally in the game. But we seemed a bit flat all over compared to them. I know that we don't have those kind of personalities in our team, but you do wonder whether a guy like Glenn Phillips, that's what you needed from him last night, to be revving the guys up saying, dive for that. And I also thought Conway, that that the drop-off Trent Bolt was just, uh, I mean, you know, those are your margins and your yeah. moments, aren't they? And he was his body shape, his body shape went there, as you know, Gilly described it yep. perfectly, going left, his right leg buckles. He got a glove on that, should have caught that. I don't know whether it would have changed the game, but it was just it just seemed that to me summed it right up. Like they would have they would have captured that catch. Yeah, that that, that changes the body language of the whole team. When Barbara Razan goes early doors, that changes the body language. Now, I remember saying to you a, a while back about you take a a part-time keeper into a World Cup, at some stage it may, you know, it may come back to haunt you. New Zealand have been searching for 
something different. They couldn't find a, a genuine wicket keeper to play in their T20 side. Phillips decided a couple of years ago to give the gloves away, take up bowling. They don't have a genuine wicket keeper. So when you take a part timer in, you, you're going. Those little things might come back to haunt you. And it, it took to the semi final before he really had an opportunity to make a game changing perhaps um, moment mm. and and it didn't happen it didn't happen and he was all crossed up the foot was going i mean smithy was shaking his head in the com box with us gilly explained it beautifully these little things and, and they are little things and you know pakistan were they were up for it but new zealand aren't that sort of team you're right they're, they're not you know I, I didn't see a lack of body language i didn't see a lack of intensity or lack of energy i just saw a pakistan side that that just played a bit better and, and mm. kind of took the game away from us and and that moment that one moment sometimes can just flatten you a little bit. Who wins tonight then? England versus India. And I'm just trying to think. I mean, look, the dream final for uh, for me is India versus Pakistan. I mean, just because, <laughs> I, you know, I just want to see a repeat of that opening match where Coley got his innings in there. And just because of the yeah. geopolitical thing of it. Plus, uh, the subcontinent, they're rock and roll, mate. Their fans bring it, all of that. So who who wins it tonight? Who, who, who would you like to win and who actually wins it? Used pitch, um, which surprises me again. It's a used surface at the Adelaide Oval. It suits India a bit more than it suits England, I think, with their pace attack. Worries about Mark Wood's injury is massive for me. The injury to David Milan doesn't bother me so much. I think it probably helps England if he doesn't play. So, look, I've got India around about a 60-40 favourites um, when, when I'm looking at the lineups and the fact that it's on a used pitch. India-Pakistan final, Melbourne cricket ground, go back to game one that they both played. Look, you couldn't get anything better. From a broadcast point of view, that would be the most watched cricket game in the history of uh, cricket. And um, and I think everyone would everyone would love to see it again as long as it was a you know a real Pakistan that turned up like 